go. Good morning, everyone. In this video, I will be taking you through a typical day of my life as an investment banker in London. So I typically wake up between 6 and 6.30 a.m. And the first thing I do is check my emails on my phone to make sure nothing has come through overnight and I'm not needed for any urgent calls. Today is looking okay, so I have time for my morning routine. As soon as my workday starts, it catches up with me super quickly and leaves me with basically zero time to do anything else. So I really try to make an active effort every morning to do some sort of exercise, eat, so then make a coffee and spend 10 minutes just to write in my journal and outline my tasks for the day. These are my personal tasks rather than work related. And I usually write down every Sunday what I want to achieve from the week and the things I will do to get there. I get ready, have my breakfast, which at the moment I'm exploring with a range of overnight oats, and this one is mango and passion fruit flavored and is absolutely divine. I flick through the main news for the day just to know what is going on in the market and the wider economy. If I'm heading to the office, I usually leave my house around 7 a.m., followed by my least favorite part of the day, and if you're a fellow Londoner, you know very well about the dreaded morning commute. Right, so before I delve into what the rest of my day looks like, I first wanted to share with you what working in an investment bank actually involves on a more high level basis. The common conception of a banker isn't always a positive one and I do believe this is exaggerated by the fact that many people don't actually understand what bankers do and the value that investment banks have on the economy. And it's quite difficult to explain what investment bankers do to people who aren't in the sector because there's no tangible product that people see at the end of it all. But the services that banks provide to companies are vital to the company's growth and ultimately the growth of the economy. So the primary goal of an investment bank is to advise and help businesses on how to meet their financial challenges, whether it's raising the capital they need, raising the debt they need, getting the loans they need, or to buy and sell other companies. If you remove the banking industry from the equation, the economy just wouldn't move forward and a lot of companies would just collapse. So I kick off my day at 8 a.m. and as soon as I get on the desk, the first thing I do is look through my calendar. I am someone who schedules pretty much everything into my calendar, meetings, replying to emails, tasks, absolutely everything. So this also doubles up as a to-do list for me. In investment banking, it's very likely that you will get a whole load of tasks come at you, big and small, coming at you throughout the day. So having a clear to-do list and a schedule to stay on top of your workload is super important. We then kick off the day at 8.30 a.m. with a team call. Every Everyone gives a quick update on what deals they're looking at and we go through any market trends or drivers that anyone wants to share. The interns and analysts would also be asked to get involved, alternate and present during these meetings as well. Between 9 and 10 a.m. I'm typically working on a proposal for a new client so I will have a call and bring in an associate to brief them on the new deal that they'll be working with me on. So the type of deals that a banker looks at largely depends on what type of banker they are and what part of the bank they work in. So if you look at a startup company that wants to fund its growth journey, this can be done either through the debt market, so that means raising money through loans and bonds, which banks will help them through, or through the equity market, so being publicly listed, which will raise a whole amount of capital for the company. Even after going down either of these avenues or a combination of both, a company might want to acquire another company or buy another company. They think, okay, I can, I can buy that company, I could turn it around and ultimately then get even bigger and increase my market share which will then further help my growth and so again banks are there to help them at this stage as well so really different areas of the bank are present at almost every stage of a company's growth journey and help in so many aspects which otherwise wouldn't be possible i work on the debt side so essentially what this means is helping companies and governments raise money to fund their growth journey whether it's acquisitions capital expenditure or broadly anything that the company needs debt financing for to help them grow and ultimately their growth will then feedback straight into the economy. So our goal is to provide solutions for these clients and understand how we can help them overcome any financial challenges. So when it comes to briefing an associate, I usually give them an overview on the new deal. I'll go through what work and research they can start doing and also start working on other elements myself in parallel. So to kind of put this in context, when it comes to the corporate team structure, there's typically four, five, six people in each team with a managing director at the top, then an executive director, then a VP, and then an associate and an analyst. So as an analyst, you don't have anyone reporting to you. As an analyst, you'll be doing the, let's say, basic work that will then be reviewed by the associate and fed back for any corrections. This would then go to the VP to analyze and highlight any corrections, and then I'll be signed off by the MD. So these corrections can include things like, okay, can you format this slightly differently? Or can you show this information using a pie chart instead of a column chart? Or maybe just to double check a number. And finally, this will get signed off by the MD. These presentations would typically be used for client meetings 
and would be used to present complex information in a more simplified manner to a client. This is just one part of my to-do list for the morning. There would be a number of ad hoc tasks and jobs to do at the same time and usually I'd pull in an analyst or associate to help support me on those. Between 10 and 12 I would be on a number of calls and meetings so during these meetings we would discuss the best way to serve the client and what we can offer them. One of the best things about working in an investment bank is that no two days will be the same. You can't expect or predict your workload. You can't predict when a new deal will come across your desk. You can't predict what kind of project you'll be working on. So it keeps things unpredictable and very exciting. Between 12 and one, mm -hmm. I'd usually have lunch. The length of my lunch really depends on my workload for the day. Sometimes I have external lunches, meet up with another client, meet up with another bank. And I usually have this about once a week. Between one and 3 p.m. there would be an internal meeting on another live deal, which is basically a deal that we are working on for a client. So depending on where you sit within a bank, you'll likely see different parts of this deal. So the credit team will see the deal from one aspect, the risk team will see it from another aspect. The legal team checks the documentation and the terms and the front office team takes on the view on how to best serve the client. There are a lot of different divisions within a bank that all work interchangeably and do different things. So if working for a corporation or working for someone is something that is for you, then it's very likely there is an area of an investment bank that has elements of a role that will align who you are with what you do. Between 3 to 5 p.m. there could be a client meeting. This would generally be an update call, checking in with the client, asking if they had any questions questions on the proposal we sent to them. When it comes to typical hours in investment banking, you can expect to work 12, 13, 14 plus hours a day, but this really depends on the division you're in and your seniority. If you are in the front office working in markets, for example, you will start your day when markets open, which is a lot earlier than middle office or back office, which faces off to other divisions within the bank. When it comes to how much you need to be available, I'm pretty much available 24 seven and I've got my work phone on me all the time, including when I'm on holidays, you've kind of just are expected to check in every now and then. Around 5 p.m. I need a pick me up and grab a coffee with someone. There is a massive coffee culture in investment banking, especially in the early years of your career. I always encourage analysts and associates to go on as many coffee catch ups as possible. It's super important to network and get to know people both in your team and outside of your team because making connections is one of the key ways to build your brand and navigate your career in the future. So after 5.30 p.m. all the key internal and external meetings would usually be done for the day and after this time I do a bit more preparing for other meetings or work with the associates to update market slides or something like that. I usually have a few more phone calls to make and I catch up with the associates once more to get an update before wrapping up. So as I near the end of my day as an investment banker, I try to squeeze in at least an hour or so after I've kicked dinner to work on my YouTube channel because that really is the thing that brings me the most happiness. So thanks so much for watching. If you found this useful, then please do subscribe and hit the like button. It means the world to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.